Okay, and this is in honor of Dave, too. I had to call it Set Free Part Do, because every time Dave did a two-part sermon, it was Part Do. comes from the uh, movie Hot Shots, I think. So last week, we talked about being set free. And so let's, let's go over the, and review that a little bit. Um, basically, it came from Isaiah 61.1 where it says, The Spirit of the Almighty Lord is with me because the Lord has anointed me to deliver good news to humble people. He has sent me to heal those who are brokenhearted to announce that captives will be set free and the prisoners will be released. And basically, uh, we went on to, to show that Jesus read that scripture in the synagogue and said, I am here to fulfill that. So Jesus came to set the captives free and release the prisoners. So we had some some things we had to go through um, as preparation for this, in preparation of being set free. The first thing was accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. If If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, now is the perfect time. You can do that right where you're sitting. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, a thief turned to him and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. It was just that easy for the thief. It's just that easy for us today. All we have to do is say, Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. That's step one. Step two, seek forgiveness from those you have wronged. Might sound a little bit like a 12-step plan. It's not. This is where the 12-step plan come from. Step three, forgive others who have wronged you. We talked last week about if you really want to be set free, you have to get this baggage out of the way. You have to get this baggage out of the way. Ask God to forgive those who have wronged you. The point here is to get your heart in the right place. If you can pray for God and say, you know what, this person who did me wrong, I have forgiven them. God, I want you to forgive them too. And the Bible bases that was Stephen when he was stoned to death and, and Jesus on the cross. Both, you know, As they were dying, they said, just forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have a clue. Forgive them because they don't know. And then step five is yield your rights to God. Turn it over. Say, I'm giving my life to you. Thank you, Randy, for leveling the picture. (laughs) So, this is where we left it last week. How do we get set free? If we did all those steps in preparation, if we did all five of those steps, how now do we get set free? And you might be asking yourself, well, wait a minute. Doesn't lo- God love me the way I am? You know, I've read parts in the Bible and it says I don't need to change for God to love me. I don't need to do all these things to receive salvation. That's true. God does love you exactly how you are sitting in here today. But I will tell you something. He loves you too much to keep you where you're at. He loves you too much to let you live where you're at. He wants something better for you. Just like every parent in here wants something better for their kids, he wants something better for you than where you're at. He loves you exactly how you are, but he knows your potential. So here we're going to do, we're going to make a list. Elian and Andy, if you could help. Um, They're going to, and maybe you want to recruit a couple more people to be efficient about it, but we're going to hand out to you uh, a piece of paper and a pen. Um, and this may sound dumb to make a list, but it works. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a list of everything we're held captive by. We had a long list last week. It could be our sin, our relationships, our past. Maybe we're held by something we've done. Maybe it's our future. We don't know where we're going.
Maybe it's our actions. Maybe it's our words. Maybe we said something to someone and we feel captive to that now. Maybe we've made a promise to someone we know we can't keep and we're chained by that. What we're going to do on this piece of paper, and I, I'd really like it if everyone participated, and I'm going to participate as well. Just make a list of everything you're being held captive by. Make a list of, you know, your sins that, that you're sorry for and you want to repent for. Make a list of the relationships that are that are holding you down. Maybe you've got friends that are pulling you down. Maybe you're pulling your friends down. Maybe it's something in your past that no one knows about but God and you're, you're constantly saying, but I can't get past that. I can't get past this, this thing I, I did or this thing I used to do or maybe this thing I did last night. Maybe you're worried about your future. Maybe you're held captive by the fact that you don't know what your future holds. Write it all down. Make a list. And if you can't think of anything, ask God to search your heart. Yes, please. And a pen, please. Thank you. Ask God to search your heart. Let's, let's go for Scripture here. This is from Psalm 139, 23 through 24. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Let's pray that prayer right now. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. As you're making this list, maybe things are coming to mind. Write them down. Things are coming to mind of what you're being held captive by. Because today you're going to be set free. You've got to make this list and get it down on paper. Search me, O oh God, as we make this list. And how does God set us free? Here in Isaiah 118, it says, Come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them white as snow. They, though they are red like crimson, I will make them white as wool. We say, if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. That's how He releases us. That's how He sets us free. He takes what's holding us captive, what's, what's offensive to God. And he moves it away. Continue to write down what's holding you captive. I want you to know something. If you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you are covered by His blood. You are covered by that death. When He died on the cross, it covered you, and all you have to do is accept Him. If you've done that, you're set free. The fact that you feel like you're held captive is simply Satan working against you. It's simply Satan telling you you're not good enough, or you don't deserve it. Or because of this or because of that, you'll never be, you know, you're never going to go to heaven. You're never going to be one with Jesus. You don't even, maybe they're telling you you don't even need to be here today. 
Maybe you're telling you you shouldn't go to church. It's not true. It's not true. Not only should you be here today, not only should you be in church, but if you accepted Jesus Christ, you're going to heaven. And not only are you going to heaven, you're going to make a difference in someone else's life. Because that's what we're here for. I promise you, you will walk out of here set free today. Jesus was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sin. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. That's in the New Living Translation. I love the way it says it in the God's Word. He was wounded for our rebellious acts. He was crushed for our sins. He was punished so we could have peace. Who wants peace here today? Anyone? We received healing from His wounds. But we have to receive that healing. We have to accept it. We have to take it. When Jesus was nailed to the cross... Our chains were nailed there with him. If you still got chains on, it's time to let them go. And here's how we're going to do it. I want you to take up your piece of paper and fold it up. So none of the words are on the outside. And I want you to come up here. and nail it to that cross. Now here's the deal. When you come up here and nail it to that cross, you can't take it back with you. Because here's what's going to happen. I'm gonna, we're going to nail that to that cross, and that cross is going right up there where you can't get it back. When you nail it to the cross, whatever is on that piece of paper stays here. And the blood of Jesus Christ is covered. Merle, will you play the video? Heavenly Father, I come before you today. And the sound of nails we hear in today was, must have been what like it sounded on Golgotha when you were nailed to the cross. You were pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and by our wounds we are healed. And as I strike every nail here, we are set free. We are no longer captive to the sin, the relationships, whatever's holding us back. We will rise when He calls our name. There will be no more sorrow, no more pain. If you're still wearing chains, leave them here. Leave them here. You're set free. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cross. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the freedom that you've given us. Lord, we don't have to be in chains. We don't have to live like we're restrained. We can live a life of freedom. We can live a life where we are free to go throughout the world and tell the world about Jesus Christ. We are the Great Commission. Satan tries to hold us back, and we're telling him right now, we are not restrained by you anymore. We are set free. We sent all of Satan's act to this judgment seat right here at the foot of the cross. Just as these pieces of paper are nailed to this cross, they're going to stay here. Every one of those nails represent a life that has been set free today. Jesus Christ changes lives. It's not about fancy lights or music or whatever. It's about a life change. And as I kneeled at the cross, I pray that every one of your lives was changed today. May it be so. Thank you for coming.